Sonic Adventure is a 1998 platform game for Sega's Dreamcast, and the first main Sonic the Hedgehog game to feature three-dimensional gameplay. The story follows Sonic the Hedgehog, Miles, Tails, Prower, Knuckles the Echidna, Amy Rose, Big the Cat, and E-102 Gamma in their quest to collect the seven Chaos Emeralds and stop Dr. Robotnik from unleashing Chaos. Controlling one of the six characters—each with their own special abilities—players explore a series of themed levels to progress through the story. Outside the main game, players can play minigames like racing and interact with Chow, a virtual pet. Following the cancellation of the Sega Saturn game Sonic X Treme, Sonic Team began work on Sonic Adventure in 1997. A 60-member development team created the game in 10 months, drawing inspiration from locations in Peru and Guatemala. Yuji Uikawa redesigned the characters for their transition to 3D, and features were added to take advantage of the Dreamcast hardware. Sega announced the game in August 1998, it was released in Japan that December and worldwide in September 1999. The game received critical acclaim and, with 2.5 million copies sold by August 2006, became the Dreamcast's bestseller. Reviewers lauded the visuals and gameplay, calling it a major technological advancement. Some speculated that it could re-establish Sega as the dominant console manufacturer after the relatively unsuccessful Saturn. Others were frustrated by the camera controls and glitches, and reactions to its audio were mixed. Despite this, journalists have ranked Sonic Adventure among the best Sonic games, and it is recognized as an important release in both the series and the platform genre. A sequel, Sonic Adventure 2, was released in 2001. Sonic Adventure was ported to the GameCube and Windows in 2003 as Sonic Adventure DX, Director's Cut, featuring updated graphics and more challenges. A high-definition version was released digitally for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 in 2010, and for Windows in 2011. Reviews for these versions were less positive, critics felt the game was not ported well to newer hardware and that it had not aged well, while running at an inconsistent frame rate. <laughs> Gameplay Sonic Adventure is a 3D platform game with action and role-playing elements. Players control one of six anthropomorphic protagonists as they venture to defeat Dr. Robotnik and his robot army, who seek the seven magical Chaos Emeralds and the evil entity Chaos. Six player characters are unlocked as the game progresses, each with their own story and attributes. Sonic the Hedgehog performs a spin dash, homing attack, and light speed dash. Miles. Tails. Prower flies, swims, and attacks robots using his tails, Knuckles the Echidna glides, climbs walls, and punches, Amy Rose can defeat enemies using her hammer, Big the Cat is slow and carries a fishing rod he can cast, and E-102 Gamma can shoot laser beams. At the start of the game, the player is placed in one of several adventure fields, open-ended hub worlds inhabited by advice-giving non-player characters. The player character is guided and instructed by the voice of Takal the Echidna. Through exploration, the player discovers entrances to levels called action stages, some of which must be opened using keys hidden in the adventure field. Once the player accesses an action stage, they are tasked with a specific objective, which is different for each character. Sonic and Amy must reach the level's end, Tails must reach the end before Sonic, Knuckles must find three hidden shards of the Master Emerald, Big must fish for his pet frog, and Gamma must fight his way through stages using projectiles as a defense. Some levels include minigames separate from the main story. These feature different styles of gameplay, among them rail shooting, racing, and sandboarding. Some minigames can only be accessed with particular characters. Fulfilling certain objectives allows the player to obtain bonus items. Unlocked minigames and stages the player has completed can be accessed from a trial mode on the title screen. Like previous Sonic the Hedgehog games, players collect golden rings as a form of health. If the player character is in possession of rings when they are hit by an enemy or other hazard, they will survive, but their rings will scatter and blink before disappearing. Canisters containing power-ups such as speed shoes, additional rings, invincibility, and elemental shields are also hidden in levels. In several stages, the player engages Robotnik or Chaos in a boss fight and must deplete the boss's health meter to proceed. Each character starts with a limited number of lives, and the player loses a life if the character drowns, gets crushed, or is hit without any rings in their possession. The game ends when the player runs out of lives. Lives can be replenished by collecting 100 rings or a 1-up. Players may also discover Chow Gardens, hidden, protective environments inhabited by Chow, a virtual pet. Players can hatch, name, and interact with a Chow, and raise the status of their Chow by giving it small animals found by defeating robots. The Dreamcast Handheld Visual Memory Unit VMU allows the player to download the minigame Chow Adventure, in which their Chow walks through a course to evolve and improve its skills. Evolving one's Chow improves its performance in competitions called Chow Races. Eggs that can produce special types of chow are hidden throughout the adventure fields. Players can earn emblems by playing through action stages, searching through the adventure fields, or winning chow races. 
Each action stage has three emblems that can be earned by replaying the stages and fulfilling objectives, such as beating the level within a time limit. Topic. Plot Dr. Robotnik seeks a new way to defeat his longtime nemesis Sonic and conquer the world. During his research, he learns about an entity called Chaos a creature that, thousands of years ago, helped to protect the Chao and the all powerful Master Emerald, which balances the power of the seven Chaos Emeralds. When a tribe of echidnas sought to steal the power of the Emeralds, breaking the harmony they had with the Chao, Chaos retaliated by using the Emerald's power to transform into a monstrous beast, perfect Chaos, and wipe them out. Before it could destroy the world, Takal, a young echidna who befriended Chaos, imprisoned it in the Master Emerald along with herself. Seeking to use Chaos, Robotnik releases it from the Master Emerald, and tests the creature's natural form on the city of Station Square. When Sonic sees local police fail to defeat it, he and Tails work to stop Robotnik from empowering it with the Chaos Emeralds. At the same time, Knuckles, the only remaining echidna, sets out to find the shards of the Master Emerald and repair it. Activating a new series of robots, including one named Gamma, Robotnik orders them to find Froggy, an amphibian who had eaten a Chaos Emerald after mutating from contact with a piece of Chaos the night he was released. His owner Big seeks to find him as well. In Station Square, Sonic's friend Amy finds a Flicky being pursued for a Chaos Emerald in its possession, and decides to protect it. When both are captured, Amy convinces Gamma not to work for Robotnik, who helps her to escape, before seeking out and destroying the other robots in his series, sacrificing himself in the process. Despite Sonic managing to disrupt Robotnik's plans, Chaos manages to absorb all the Chaos Emeralds, transforming into perfect Chaos. It rebels against Robotnik and attacks Station Square, devastating the city. Having experienced flashbacks from Takal, who was released herself, Sonic realizes that Chaos has been in constant torment and sorrow, and that imprisoning it again will not stop it. Using the emeralds brought to him by the others to transform into his super form, Sonic fights perfect Chaos and defeats it. Returned to normal, Chaos calms down when he sees the Chao living peacefully in Station Square. Realizing its pain is gone, Takal decides to take it somewhere safe to live in peace. With Sonic having won, he decides to leave to pursue a fleeing Robotnik. Topic. Development Topic Background and concept During the early 1990s, Sega was one of the most successful video game companies due to its Genesis console. Sales for the console were driven by the popularity of its flagship franchise of 2D platformers, Sonic the Hedgehog. During this time, series co-creator Yuji Naka worked with Sega Technical Institute in the United States to develop Sonic games. After the completion of Sonic and Knuckles in 1994, Naka moved to work with Sonic Team in Japan. STI began developing Sonic X Treme for the Sega Saturn, which would have been the first Sonic the Hedgehog game to feature full 3D gameplay. X Treme suffered a series of setbacks and was cancelled in 1997. The cancellation is an important factor in the Saturn's commercial failure, without it, the system had no original Sonic platformer. Meanwhile, Naka and Sonic Team developed original Saturn games, such as Nights into Dreams. Due to the series' relative lack of presence on the Saturn, according to Retro Gamer, B. Y. Mid-1997 Sonic had essentially been shuffled into the background. It was astonishing to see that just six years after his debut, Sonic was already retro. Naka still wanted to make a 3D Sonic game, and felt that only Sonic Team should do it. For this reason, he refused to let STI use the Knights game engine for Extra May, a factor in that game's cancellation. In August 1996, Knights into Dreams designer Takashi Iazuka proposed a role-playing style Sonic game with a greater emphasis on storytelling, which formed the basis of Sonic Adventure. Iazuka felt that Sonic fans had been let down because the team was not focusing on the series. Additionally, Kazuyuki Hoshino, who would serve as art director on Sonic Adventure, said he thought during the Saturn era Sonic had become outdated and strove to reinvent the character. Sonic Team started to work on Sonic Adventure in April 1997 on the Saturn with a 20-strong team. Sonic Team created the first prototype using the Knight's engine, but the Saturn's limited capabilities made development difficult. Sega president Hayao Nakayama informed Naka of the Saturn's successor, the Dreamcast, and he believed the new console would allow Sonic Team to create the ultimate Sonic game. When the team learned the Dreamcast was nearing completion, they moved development to take advantage of its greater quantity of RAM, stronger CPU, and the VMU. Not wanting to waste their completed work, they placed it as a bonus in the compilation game Sonic Jam, the final Sonic game for the Saturn. In July 1997, Sonic Team began redeveloping Sonic Adventure for the Dreamcast, and the team expanded to 60. Iazuka served as director on Sonic Adventure, while Naka produced. Although at the time one of the largest video games created, Sonic Adventure was completed in a relatively brief 10 months. 
Sonic Team undertook development in conjunction with the Dreamcast, aiming to release the game in December 1998, even if it meant making improvements after release. Developing Sonic Adventure at the same time as the system, which was not completed until two months before the game's release, gave Iazuka influence over the console's development. For example, he was able to request more RAM for the console specifically for Sonic Adventure. Topic: <laughs> Art direction. Sonic Team felt challenged by the new hardware to recreate Sonic and his world in a new way. They began development using the character designs from the Genesis games, but quickly discovered the characters' bodies were too short and their heads too big, making them difficult to see. Yuji Uikawa redesigned each character to suit the transition to 3D and to give them new, edgy, more western design. Looking to the animation of Walt Disney and Looney Tunes for inspiration, he made Sonic more mature, taller, and slimmer, and gave him longer quills. He darkened his blue color and gave him green irises in reference to Green Hill Zone. Uikawa tried to make Sonic look like a comic book character and compared the style to graffiti. After redesigning Sonic, he made the other characters fit this new art style. Because Sonic Adventure was a Dreamcast launch title, the team strove to demonstrate the console's capabilities with realistic graphics, which they felt would appeal to consumers. To achieve a more realistic feel for the environments, the core members of Sonic Team visited temples, jungles, and ancient ruins in Mesoamerican landscapes, including Cancun, Guatemala, and Peru. While Sonic Team members had to draw artwork by hand for games in the past, for Sonic Adventure they were able to use photographs taken during their visits as textures. The greatest influences were the Tikal Ruin in Guatemala and Machu Picchu in Peru. The character Tikal was inspired by Peru and took her name from the Guatemalan ruins. The team also wanted to add elements unexpected in a platform game, the level in which Tail Sandboards was inspired by a group of sandboarders in Ica, Peru. The 3D visuals were created using a Voodoo 2 graphics chip. Topic. Design One of the biggest challenges the designers faced was transitioning the series' 2D style to 3D. In the Genesis Sonic games, the players simply had to go right to reach the end of a level, but in Sonic Adventure they could move in every direction. The designers created models for the stages before testing it as the player character, resulting in trial and error. Some levels, such as The Lost World, were rebuilt dozens of times, others referenced past Sega games, such as Ice Cap Sonic the Hedgehog 3, and the Tornado levels Panzer Dragoon. One particular difficulty was defeating enemies. In the 2D games, enemies were beaten simply by jumping on them, but this was harder to achieve in a 3D game. Therefore, Sonic was given the ability to target enemies in midair. Iazuka said the cinematic sequences were conceived to take advantage of the environments, giving the player an element of discovery in addition to the platforming. Stages featured gameplay similar to the original Genesis games and were designed to take at least five minutes to complete. Sonic Team split levels into parts to save memory. Because Sonic Adventure had a stronger emphasis on storytelling than previous games in the series, the team implemented hub worlds to draw the players deeper into the world. The hub world's emphasis on exploring to find new areas and power-ups was inspired by The Legend of Zelda. When seeing the completed level designs, Aizuka and Naka decided to repurpose them for other player characters. Iazuka said they felt it would be a waste if Sonic just quickly ran through the levels that we spent so much time creating. The first characters besides Sonic added to the game were Tails and Knuckles. Tails stages turned portions of Sonic's levels into races, while Knuckles' treasure hunting missions were designed as a contrast to the other's straightforward ones. Sonic Adventure was the first time Amy was playable in a Sonic platformer, and Iazuka aimed to use her to add tension, such as hiding from pursuers, that Sonic's gameplay could not offer. Sonic Adventure features two new playable characters, Big and Gamma. Sonic Team had already implemented an in-game fishing rod with no context or use, leading to the creation of Big. Big was designed to be giant and relaxed so the player would not expect something more intense. Gamma and his playstyle were created in response to fans who wanted elements of a shoot em up in Sonic and because of Iazuka's desire to include some type of satisfying gameplay that couldn't be done with Sonic. Neither Big nor Gamma were intended to play a large role, thus both of their campaigns were short. Iazuka also wanted to create a villain who would have been impossible to make on older hardware. He settled on something liquid and transparent and created Chaos. Iazuka presented the concept to Naka, who was impressed. Chaos was originally intended to have realistic blue scales in his final form, but this was abandoned because of the technological constraints of the Dreamcast. According to Iazuka, the team tried to include as much content as possible. One addition was the Chow Raising system, which Iazuka conceived to take advantage of the VMU. Sonic Team had used a similar virtual pet system, the A Life, 
In Nights into Dreams, Ayazuka used the A life as a base, while improving it with the VMU and the option to improve its skills. Ayazuka hoped it would be made into a character players could touch and raise. It was also designed to appeal to casual gamers not familiar with games like Sonic, and to add replay value. The design took considerable time to finalize and had to be made as simple as possible because the virtual pet's look changes form as it evolves. Topic. Audio While some Sonic games, such as 1993's Sonic CD, contained limited voice work, Sonic Adventure was the first Sonic game to feature extensive voice acting. The decision was made early in development as the game was more story-focused than previous Sonic games. Sonic Team staff had differing opinions about how Sonic should sound. Ayazuka recalled that the only element they agreed on was to avoid using an anime voice actor, favoring a film actor with an over-the-top voice. Sonic Team cast Junichi Kanemaru as Sonic. In an interview celebrating his 30th anniversary as a voice actor, Kanemaru said one reason he was cast was because of his ability to speak English. The English language voice cast consists of Ryan Drummond as Sonic, Corey Bringers as Tails, Michael McGahan as Knuckles, Jennifer Dewyard as Amy, John St. John as Big, and Dean Bristow as Robotnik. Sonic Adventure's score was primarily composed by Jun Senoe, with additional music by Fumi Kumatani, Kenichi Tokoi, and Masaru Setsumaru. The group created the main theme, Open Your Heart. Other vocal themes were performed by Marion Saunders, Dred Fox, Ted Poley, Nikki Gregoroff, Tony Harnell, and Johnny Geely. The team preferred hot, funky, and rock and roll music over the electropop of earlier Sonic games. Ayazuka stated the style was adopted because the Dreamcast sound was a significant advance from that of the Genesis. Some tracks were rearranged from the 1996 game Sonic 3D Blast. A two-disc soundtrack, Sonic Adventure, Digilog Conversation. Original soundtrack, was released in Japan in January 1999. In May 2011, a 20th anniversary edition of the soundtrack was released. Digital versions were also released on iTunes and Spotify in September 2014 and January 2017, respectively. Brave Wave Productions released a vinyl LP version of the soundtrack including interviews with Senoe and Ayazuka in 2018. Topic. Release. Sonic Adventure was kept a secret during production, though screenshots were leaked in mid-1998 and plans for a 3D Sonic game had long been rumored. It was unveiled by Naka and the rest of Sonic Team on August 22, 1998, at the Tokyo International Forum. The team showed off several dynamic elements, such as a chase sequence from the first level and tail sandboarding sequence. Naka described the debut as intense, having given his all to make it fit for release. On December 23, 1998, Sonic Adventure was released in Japan. The Japanese version shipped with many glitches and camera problems. Several members of Sonic Team flew to Sega of America to patch the game, delaying its Western release for several months. The localized version was released in North America on September 9, 1999, and in Europe on September 23, 1999. It includes Japanese and English language audio tracks, as well as Japanese, English, Spanish, French, and German subtitles. Online features including Chow Daycare and downloadable content DLC, such as minigames and new level assets, were also added. The localized version was later released in Japan as Sonic Adventure International. Prior to the launch of the Dreamcast in the United States, Sega made an exclusive deal with Hollywood Video to allow customers to rent the Dreamcast console along with a non-retail version of the game, Sonic Adventure, Limited Edition. The promotion began on July 15, 1999, and took place at 1,055 Hollywood video stores across the country. In 2001, Sega announced it would transition from a first party to a third party software publisher. Wanting to reach new players by creating an enhanced version of one of their older games, in June 2003, Sega released Sonic Adventure DX, Director's Cut, a port of Sonic Adventure for the GameCube and Windows. While mostly identical to the original release, Sonic Adventure DX features updated graphics, including higher resolution textures and more detailed character models, has a locked frame rate of 60 frames per second, and sports a redesigned Chow Raising system that uses connectivity with the Game Boy Advance GBA. It includes 60 new missions and the option to unlock all 12 Sonic games released for the Game Gear. Metal Sonic can be unlocked as a playable character if all 130 emblems are collected. These features were added to appeal to players of the original game. In September 2010, Sega re-released Sonic Adventure as a downloadable game for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, followed by a Windows release in March 2011 via Steam. This version is based on Sonic Adventure DX and supports high-definition visuals, but the new missions, Metal Sonic, and the Game Gear games were removed. The missions and Metal Sonic can be re-implemented by purchasing them as DLC. 
The game was also included in the Dreamcast Collection compilation in 2011, and is backwards compatible with the Xbox One. Reception As the first fully 3D Sonic platform game, Sonic Adventure was highly anticipated. It received critical acclaim, and some critics called it one of the greatest video games of all time. It is the best selling Dreamcast game. By August 4, 2006, it had sold 2.5 million copies, including 440,000 in Japan and 1.27 million in the United States. The visuals and presentation attracted wide acclaim. Arcade Magazine described it as a quantum leap forward in aesthetics and visual detail in video games, and Hyper estimated they even exceeded what was possible on high end personal computers. IGN called it the most graphically impressive platform game released up to that date, praising its cinematic sequences and describing it as "...engrossing, demanding, and utterly awe-inspiring." GameSpot agreed and said only Soul Calibur's graphical quality surpassed that of Sonic Adventure. Edge felt the graphical features showed off the Dreamcast's potential to the fullest and that the game was "...perfect." As a showcase for the system, the audio received mixed responses. GameSpot and Game Revolution called the full motion video FMV cutscenes and voice acting well produced and fitting, though GameSpot noted poor lip syncing. IGN thought the cutscenes were repetitive and voiced strong disapproval of the voice acting, declaring it a complete joke and downright awful. IGN had a particular distaste for Tails' voice, and retrospectively called it among the most annoying to feature in a video game. Allgame was conflicted, they appreciated Tails' portrayal but found Sonic's and Knuckles' voices unfitting. GameSpot and Allgame praised the rock-style music, but Game Revolution described the score as absolutely horrible. The gameplay was generally praised. GameSpot admired the straightforward, linear approach to the 3D platform genre and particularly praised it for keeping the basic gameplay of the original Genesis games. IGN said the game would keep players busy even after completion, noting its internet connectivity and other extras. On the other hand, Game Revolution said apart from being quicker, it did not advance the platform genre's design. Retrospectively, 1001 Video Games You Must Play Before You Die called its environments vast and twisted, stating it, brilliantly, captured traditional Sonic elements. The Chow minigame was noted as a major departure from the gameplay of the series. GameSpot wrote that, while really just a diversion, the Chow were an interesting, fun addition, singling out their internet functions as a highlight. Allgame said the Chow helped increase the replay value, although it was, strange, required patience, and did not provide bonuses in the main game. Game Revolution called the Chow a neat addition and praised its use of the VMU. Some critics compared Sonic Adventure to Super Mario 64, Nintendo's groundbreaking 1996 game that propelled the Nintendo 64 and the 3D platform genre. Edge said Sonic Adventure was a worthy rival to Super Mario 64, but Allgame wrote that Sonic Adventure was not as ambitious and that those looking for exploration would be disappointed with its linear gameplay. They compared it to the similarly linear Crash Bandicoot but felt Sonic Adventure was more confined. Still, they praised the gameplay as varied and said its replay value was strong. Game journalists Ruzel DiMaria and Johnny L. Wilson retrospectively wrote Sonic Adventure was not as strong as Super Mario 64 and failed to catch on with players in nearly the way that Mario had done. Though it had fascinating features, such as the use of the Tamagotchi-like memory card to incubate eggs for little pet creatures and some good action segments. The camera system and glitches were criticized by many reviewers. IGN called the camera incredibly frustrating and inconsistent, and GameSpot noted it caused problems with collision detection. Edge complained the camera sometimes goes behind walls. Authors from GamesRadar retrospectively wrote that Sonic Adventure was horrendously buggy, singling out falling through floors and getting stuck, but also said the sheer amount of content made up for this. GameSpot thought Sonic Adventure redefined the possibilities of the platform genre, and according to Computer and Video Games, CVG, many things you thought were impossible to see and experience in computer games are now here. Allgame wrote that the game was an impressive showing of the Dreamcast's potential and that it was among the best of the series. Edge said its criticisms such as scenery pop-up and instances of poor collision detection are minor flaws in an otherwise very fine piece of work. Arcade and CVG speculated the game could save the Dreamcast, which had not sold well by the end of 1998. CVG also thought it could re-establish Sega as the dominant console manufacturer after the relatively unsuccessful Saturn. Re-releases Sonic Adventure DX – Director's Cut was received less positively than the original. 
GameSpot was disappointed the re-release did not address the problems of the original version, irritated the graphics were only marginally different, and dissatisfied with its collision detection. They offered some praise for the extra features, such as the missions, but concluded players were better off playing the Dreamcast version. IGN agreed, calling it, "...a sloppy port of a game that has long been undeserving of its high praise." IGN noted its frequent frame rate drops and called its camera one of the worst they had ever seen. They said the connectivity to the GBA Sonic games added depth but concluded this did not compensate for the problems in the port. Nintendo World Report was more positive, praising the Game Gear games for retaining their multiplayer support and finding Sonic and Tails gameplay enjoyable. Reviews of the 2010 re release were generally unfavorable, most of the criticism was directed at the perceived lack of effort put into the port. IGN called it, so fundamentally flawed that it borders on unplayable, observing that the sections that worked best required the least input from the player. They criticized the lack of widescreen support but offered minor praise for its steady frame rate. 1UP.com lambasted the port for what they called its slapdash quality, criticizing its display, controls, and data design, and saying it feels like it wasn't even tuned for the Xbox 360 controller and its analog sticks. Destructoid was less harsh, writing that fans of the franchise would be able to enjoy the game but warned casual players that all you'll find is a relic that was once considered greatness, and that it pained them to say that. Topic Legacy With most contemporary 3D platform games focusing on exploration and collecting items, Sonic Adventure stood out with its linear gameplay. According to GamesRadar, as one of the first sixth-generation console games, it changed the industry forever. Joystick wrote that both Adventure and the original Sonic the Hedgehog had innovated, in 3D and 2D games, respectively, through effective linear level design and by feeling good to play. In 2009, GamePro listed Sonic Adventure as the seventh best platform game of all time, saying it had not aged well in certain aspects but its core gameplay remained among the best of the Sonic series. Several journalists ranked the game among the series' best, but Kotaku argued the addition of voice acting and greater focus on plot changed Sonic into a flat, lifeless husk of a character, who spits out slogans and generally has only one personality mode, the radical attitude dude, the sad recycled image of vague 90s cultural concept. Many of Sonic Adventure's designs and concepts were reused in later Sonic games. The direction, basic gameplay, and Ueikawa's modernized character designs became series staples. One level in the 2006 Sonic the Hedgehog reboot heavily references Sonic Adventure's Emerald Coast stage. To celebrate the Sonic series' 20th anniversary in 2011, Sega released Sonic Generations, which reused aspects from past games in the franchise. The Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Windows versions contain reimagined versions of the Speed Highway level and the Perfect Chaos boss fight, and the Nintendo 3DS version contains a remake of Emerald Coast. Several characters that first appeared in Sonic Adventure appeared in later games. As well as appearing in Sonic Generations, Chaos is an antagonist in the 2017 entry Sonic Forces, it and Gamma are playable characters in the 2004 fighting game Sonic Battle, and a recreation of its boss fight appears in Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games. The Chao creatures also feature predominantly in later games. One of the characters introduced in Adventure, Big the Cat, became infamous for his negative reception. Game Informer considered his gameplay painful and boring, while Destructoid decried his portrayal as a mentally handicapped imbecile and his voice actor's incoherent performance. Big is widely considered by video game journalists the worst character in the Sonic franchise, and was named one of the worst game characters in a poll conducted by 1UP.com. On October 4, 1999, Sega announced that a sequel to Sonic Adventure was in development. Sonic Adventure 2 made its debut at E3 2000 and was released in June 2001. The sequel was designed to be more action oriented than the slower paced, story centric adventure and to give all the characters equal playtime. Like its predecessor, Sonic Adventure 2 received positive reviews. A concept for Sonic Adventure 3 was reworked into the 2008 game Sonic Unleashed. In 2017, Iazuka stated there were no plans for a third Sonic Adventure game, saying it would not advance the series' design. He did not rule out the idea, saying, If we can get the gameplay to evolve and get to a place where Adventure 3 makes sense, then you might see an Adventure 3 come out. In December 2018, Iazuka expressed interest in remaking Sonic Adventure. The plot of Sonic Adventure was adapted in the second season of the 2003 Sonic the Hedgehog anime series Sonic X American Licensing Corporation 4 Kids Entertainment hired a new voice cast for the English language dub but the Japanese cast from the games reprised their roles in the original version of the show. Archie Comics also adapted the game in its Sonic the Hedgehog comic book series. The comic offered an explanation for the altered character designs and established that Station Square was hidden beneath Sonic's planet, Mobius. <laughs> <laughs> Notes <laughs>